you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you both for being here today. And I want to thank uh, Chairman McKeon for his leadership. Uh, I think it's been very revealing, Mr. Chairman, the information that the American people are receiving today, very important for the American people. Uh, it has direct impact on the citizens I represent. I'm very grateful I represent uh, Fort Jackson, uh, the initial Army training facility. I represent Paris Island. Uh, we're very proud of the Marines uh, that are trained there. Uh, Marine Corps Air Station, Beaufort Naval Hospital. Uh, I represent North Airfield. Uh, and in the new district I represent of Aiken County, I now uh, will be in the neighborhood of Fort Gordon in the Eisenhower Medical Center. So I've got um, wonderful people, military families. Uh, and as chairman of the military personnel uh, subcommittee, I'm very, very concerned about what I uh, have heard today. Uh, and in particular, uh, Dr. Carter, yesterday in advance of this hearing, the president announced that he would exempt military personnel accounts from sequestration. Can you please describe in more detail whether these accounts will be exempted in whole or in part, or to what extent? It, it, the the uh, law gave the president uh, until uh, early August to make that determination. Uh, he did decide to exempt military personnel in toto. Uh, so it is that part of our budget will be uh, 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 exempt from sequestration. That means that the rest of the budget, of course, has to bear a larger share uh, of the cuts. Um, but uh, we certainly think that's uh, it's that's a fair and a practical thing to do. It's fair because it's the right thing to do by our troops in a time of war. It's a practical thing to do because the way the military personnel regulations and laws work, it would be very difficult to take that much money out of the military personnel account if it weren't exempted. For example, we cannot furlough military personnel. We can furlough civilian personnel and sadly might have to do that if sequester happened. We can't do that with military personnel. So the only way we could accommodate a cut of that size would be to do things like um, uh, stop accessions, which is very unhealthy for the force, uh, stop bringing in new people, uh, stop uh, permanent change of station moves, which means everybody freezes in place and we can't move anybody around. So as you thought about applying sequester to the military personal, personnel account, it's particularly unpleasant. As I've said, sequester is very unpleasant in general to everything we do, but particularly unpleasant to that. So it's a, in, the great, in, in, a, in a bad situation, uh, this is the, making the best of a bad situation to exempt military personnel. And, and actually, you said it was stupid. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's just unfortunate for our country. Uh, and as you mentioned about furloughs and accession, uh, relate to that is uh, some, th something else, and that is does the exemption of military personnel accounts from sequester mean that even more military personnel will have to be separated to offset the loss of savings from pay and benefits? Uh, no, because the, uh, the entire military personnel account uh, is protected in this way. What will, what will uh, suffer disproportionately as a consequence is readiness, of the force that exists, um, modernization, research development, test and evaluation, all of the other major accounts will suffer as a, as a consequence. Uh, additionally, in your uh, testimony, you indicated this will affect our service members who are serving overseas, uh, actually uh, in a line of fire. In June, the Commandant of the Marine Corps expressed concerns about, quote, a hollow force, the same statement of Secretary Panetta, if the President exempts military personnel accounts. Do you agree with the Commandant? If the O&M accounts are sequestered, how will the departments ensure that service members are properly trained and equipped? Well, th this is the kind of uh, trade-off one doesn't want to have to make but is made under sequester. Um, past 2013, when these very mechanical cuts are imposed, uh, I think that uh, the entire leadership of the department uh, and is made clear and the president made clear in the uh, budget that we submitted for fiscal 13, which of course didn't preclude, didn't presume sequestration, but, but, but did contain his intent on this matter. Uh, we do understand that military personnel are going to have to be part of meeting our budget target in the future. Remember, we already have in our 13 budget $489 billion of cuts. 
We've already taken that in defense. We did include military personnel in that because to do otherwise would, as you suggest, be unbalanced and, and it would mean that we'd have a hollow force of the same size. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr.